Games can cost a lot, but some absolutely don't. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on GameRanks, 15 awesome free games that were released in 2019. Now, a quick disclaimer just to make it abundantly clear, there are a ton of great free games that were released in previous years that you can get right now and you should. We just wanted to focus on games from this year because otherwise this video would be basically impossible. Without any further ado, starting off at number 15, it's Quake 2 RTX, which I'm gonna go ahead and say is probably the best possible advertisement for NVIDIA's ray tracing technology. They got Lightspeed Studios to go ahead and remake Quake 2, taking full advantage of, like I said, NVIDIA's new technology. It's Quake 2. If you know what Quake 2 is, it's a classic FPS that's just without a doubt one of the best ever, and it looks better than it ever has before. Obviously, it still retains all of its old 3D models, but as far as atmosphere, completely different. If you've never played Quake 2, I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, it's a game you should play. As far as that era of FPSs, it's pretty much the best. And again, it just looks amazing now. And it remake it and just give it away. Perfect idea. Great idea, NVIDIA. And a nice big thanks to Bethesda for letting them do it. Moving on to number 14, the Warframe Empyrean expansion, which is not necessarily just an expansion. They're saying, well, this is more about connection. And in a way, you could almost call it the next version of Warframe, because what they're attempting to do is connect everything that they've done in the previous release new open world, add new thing mode. So what they've done is added space. You can have a spaceship and you can traverse Warframe. It's, frankly, very cool. You can recruit NPCs to be the crew of your ship, which is also very cool. Now, the reason we've put this at number 14 is because we have no idea when it's coming out. Supposedly, it's going to be this year, and we haven't been able to play it, so we didn't feel right putting it really high on the list of great games that you should play this year that were released for free. That being said, this looks like an expansion that's going to make Warframe into a much more unified experience and maybe kind of act like a sequel would if they were going to release a sequel. It's the big jump in Warframe, and I'm pretty excited for it, because Warframe's always been a pretty cool game. We'll definitely keep you updated as to when it comes out, but keep an eye out. Moving on to number 13, let's talk about Undefeated. Now, there was a lot of Twitter buzz about this, calling it a Superman simulator, and on the surface, I'd say that's basically what it is. You're an invincible superhero with basically unlimited powers and can do whatever, rescuing people, stopping people who are doing harm, fighting supervillains, etc., etc. It's a game that's not going to blow you away graphically. It was made by three students, and if you keep that in mind, it's actually fairly impressive graphically. But most importantly, it's fun as hell. There's so much weirdness that you can accomplish just dealing with a big batch of cops who, by the way, do not like you because apparently they like it when they get to help with their glowing red eyes. Wouldn't really characterize them as the friendly neighborhood cop stereotype or anything like that, though. There's stuff specifically to do, but, like, you don't have to. Just doing whatever in this game is fun as hell. Undefeated is amazing. Play it. Moving on to number 12. Maelstrom is a naval battle royale where you play as a ship. It is paced like an arcade game, and it's so fun. See, the thing that makes this fun is it doesn't try to be a deep simulation. It knows exactly what it's going for, in that a battle royale game is basically meant to be jumped into and the action starts. That's how this plays out. It's incredibly chaotic. It might remind you a bit of Sid Meier's Pirates, but obviously it's a battle royale. Obviously all of the regular trappings of battle royale where you're going up against a bunch of other ships are of course there, but there's also big monsters and that adds an element of unknown to the gameplay. And between that and environmental disasters, really there's nothing I can say that's negative about this. If the premise sounds fun to you, I can't imagine you not liking it. Maelstrom does exactly what I expect it to do in exactly the way I would hope it would do it. Moving on to number 11, Kurtzbell is a game that takes a lot of ideas and puts them into one thing pretty well, I think. It's a third-person action battle game. I would call it maybe a very action-oriented MMORPG take that's very clearly anime-inspired with a very good environmental visual style. Obviously, the characters look like anime, but the world itself is actually very pretty as well. It's got a pretty extensive character creator that, despite giving you lots of choice, Make stuff that looks like it belongs in the world, which is very cool in my opinion. It's got a nice, quickly paced battle system that doesn't feel like a ripoff, I guess. It does have some in-app purchases, 
but I wouldn't call it pay to win. I think you could probably easily not spend any money in this game, but that leads us to our next point. It is an early access game, and it is obviously not a complete game, because there are still bugs and problems with it that hopefully will be fixed by the final release. However, the game is extremely fun. Moving on to number 10 is Dead or Alive 6 Core Fighters. Now, this is the free-to-play version of Dead or Alive 6. It's kind of a restricted, less content-rich version of the game, although it's more than I would call a demo. You get access to four characters, Base, Kasumi, Hitomi, and a new character called Diego, and you pretty much get every mode except for the story mode is just the first chapter which is fine because quest mode is absolutely phenomenal. And if you're interested in the online multiplayer aspects of the game, you can participate with this version of the game. There's two ways you can buy more content for the game if indeed you're interested in it. There's a la carte, but you'll end up spending a lot more that way. If you want to play through the story mode and want to get all of the characters and all that, just buy the full thing, you'll end up spending less. Moving on to number nine. Hey, do you want Portal with weapons as an arena warfare game? Well, Splitgate Arena Warfare is that game, and oh my god, yes. Absolutely, 100%, yes. Basically, imagine Halo plus Portal. That's this. And it is in every way exactly as good as it sounds. Seriously, it plays so much like Halo and so much like Portal. There's nothing to explain. You will get it immediately as you are playing it if you are familiar with both of these games. It's also a game that has been marketed really badly and deserves tons of attention because it's great. If there's any game on this list that deserves more attention than it's gotten, it's definitely this one. And if you are a fan of Portal and Halo, again, play this. It's everything you would want from both games being combined into one thing. Seriously, Splitgate Arena Warfare. Go. Now. Moving on to number eight, it's War Mode. Now, War Mode is not a particularly complex game. It is a old school shooter, which gives you a couple of modes and doesn't try to fleece you with pay to win stuff. I would prefer if games didn't have any microtransactions, but for a small dev like this releasing a free game, this is a model in how to do it without being intrusive and bad. It's generally just cosmetics and every purchase in the game is a dollar. Now, I just want to emphasize very much that this is an old school shooter. It has every problem and every charm of a very old school game. And I think that's the main reason to play it, honestly. Moving on to number seven, it's Minion Masters, a quote, fast-paced hybrid of deck builder MOBA and tower defense. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it's kind of a faster paced, more elaborate Clash Royale that brings a little bit more to the table as far as what you can do. To differentiate, I would say it is a lot faster paced and much more oriented around larger numbers of characters on screen and I would say even necessitates some strategies that make me think a little bit more of RTS than MOBA, but it's obviously still very much a MOBA. At its heart, it brings a lot to the table that you've probably seen before, but it's done so well and with a different pacing and feel that makes it, I think, more than the sum of its parts. Moving on to number six, Black Desert Online, which is, as it describes itself, a sandbox living world MMORPG. It's a game where an absolute ton is going on at any given moment. And for a game that has as much going on in it, including your fishing, your trading, economy, etc., etc., it has some of the best combat in this type of game you would expect. It is very grindy, but the battle system is rewarding and fun to play, so I mean that, in my opinion, trades itself pretty well. It's a hard game that, frankly, if you don't want to lose, you shouldn't play, because there are times that it's not entirely fair, but it's actually a very large amount of fun, and it almost doesn't matter. And at number five is Black Squad, which if you've ever played CSGO, imagine that with a little more influence from Call of Duty, but not the more recent stuff. It's not a game that's gonna blow you away with new style mechanics. It's in some ways, maybe a little bit bland as far as the graphics go, but really is actually fun to jump into and doesn't make you do a lot of stuff in order to enjoy the game to its fullest. It's not a pay to win. And obviously that's a huge plus in any free competitive game. And I'm not gonna say that this is one of those games that like leans on old school charm. It's just simple. 
Moving on to number four, it's Dota Underlords, which is a spin-off of Dota that is more or less a auto chess game, and it nails it. It just does it right. It takes some of the aspects that you know and love from Dota. It does actually bring a nice amount of challenge to the table, and you probably will lose for a while as you're playing, but you will have a hell of a lot of fun doing it. It's really entirely about strategy and less about razor sharp reflexes or anything like that. Keeping in mind, this is basically Valve's version of a game somebody else developed. It's not the most original thing, but it's the official one and it's got a lot of might behind it. It's doing really well as far as I'm concerned. Number three is Dauntless. Dauntless is a monster hunter free to play. That's the best way to describe it. It actually pairs down a lot of things that make it a more constant gameplay loop where you fight these huge monsters, gather loot, craft, get back to fighting monsters. It does a good job of differentiating from its different types of weapons and gives you a nice progression for simply using them and constantly moving forward. It's also got great graphics, a very unique look to it. And if you like the gameplay in Monster Hunter and are looking for an experience where you can just kind of do that without any of the extra stuff, this is what to play. I mean, it's incredibly fun. The microtransactions are cosmetic only and don't punish you for not buying them. Basically, if you want to do Monster Hunter combat only and still retain good progression mechanics, here you go. This is it. Coming in at number two, Apex Legends is a game that I did not expect to be good. It just kind of came out of nowhere and seemed like, oh, another Battle Royale game. But as it turns out, it takes the best mechanics from the non-mech gameplay in Titanfall and gives you that in a Battle Royale. It also brings in a sort of squad element to it, if you so desire, that I think works better than a lot of Battle Royale squad stuff. That being said, the real reason to play it, like I said, is the non-mech Titanfall gameplay in a Battle Royale. It just works. It works really well. I love the movement mechanics. I love sliding around, and even if I do badly, it feels very cool, and that's always satisfying. Give it a shot, Apex Legends. If you haven't played it by now and you like Battle Royales, what are you doing? And finally, at number one, Destiny 2. Yeah, there's a free-to-play version of Destiny 2 now, and that's really cool. It's called Destiny 2 New Light, and it's Destiny 2. Bungie not having to deal with Activision has just been great for people, and if you like Destiny, it's been just getting better since. If you haven't played Destiny 2, here's how to do it. Go to Steam and download it. It's so much better than having to deal with Activision's launcher. And honestly, it's just easy to feel the weight of Activision off of the game. It's Destiny 2 for free. Like, what questions are there to ask? Play it. Also, a quick bonus for you, Dissidia, Final Fantasy NT Free Edition. Basically, three versus three battles with a bunch of popular Square characters. It's a bit of a divisive game, but it's got pretty darn good combat. And as far as expecting it to look as bad as a PSP game, no, it definitely looks way better now. Moving on, we have Shepherd of Light, which is a student-made game that really does a different thing with its aesthetics. You have to find your sheep, which you've lost, but they obviously aren't sheep. They're just light, basically. They're more metaphorical sheep than anything else. And this essentially involves solving lots of environmental puzzles. Next is Team Fight Tactics, a Riot Games version of the Auto Battler. You'll need League of Legends to play, but that's also free as well. In truth, it definitely does enough to distinguish itself and give itself a worthwhile place in a quickly establishing genre. And I think at this point, it's kind of preference because, again, the genre is very quickly establishing itself. Which out of these games have you played? Share your experiences. And if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. And the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.